Today I'm going to talk to you about where to put your money if your goal is to become financially stable. Because when it comes to personal finances, I found that it's very, very easy to get into this mindset of I have to do everything. So for me specifically, I was trying to save money, get out of debt, increase my income, figure out how to invest, and the list goes on and on and on. Trying to create a side hustle, and I was just everywhere, but I felt like I wasn't making any progress whatsoever. And it's because I didn't focus on what was necessary to become financially stable. And here's the thing. You only need three things. We're going to go over them right now. So the first one is money in versus money out. That is absolutely the top priority when it comes to being financially stable. Because it doesn't matter how much money you make if you don't keep much of it. And once you keep the money, that doesn't mean much unless you know what to do with it. And I'm going to help you with that. So I'm going to give you a real life example right now. Let's say you're making $70,000 per year on paper. You know what I'm saying? Before taxes, that's how much money you're making. But if you believe that, that is a big mistake. And that is a big mistake of most of America right now. As a matter of fact, that's the first financial mistake most people make before they make a plethora of other financial mistakes, which we're going to prevent you from doing right here in this video right now. So the first step is realizing that $70,000 a year is actually $56,500, give or take, after taxes. And that's the number you've got to base your budget off of, not the $70,000. If you start off like this, you're already starting off on the right track, but it gets even deeper than that. Now what I want you to do, and I'll do this with you on the screen, I want you to take your regular expenses. I'm talking about things that you know for a fact, the exact amount of money you're going to be spending every single month. And I want you to multiply it by 12 and I'll give you an example. And I'm looking at my notes here, but let's say in this example, you have your rent, your utilities, phone bill, car note, car insurance, and internet. Those are examples of what I'm talking about. So for the sake of this example, your rent's $1,200, your utilities are $75 on average, your phone bill's $100, your car note's $300, your car insurance $140, and your internet bill is $70. Now here's what I need you to do with those numbers. Multiply them by 12. This is an absolute game changer, and I can't believe I just thought of this method like two videos ago. But I want to give this to you because I think it'll help you tremendously. When you multiply your rent by 12, that's $14,400 per year. Your utilities will be $900 per year. Your phone bill will be $1,200 per year. Car note, $3,600 per year. Car insurance, $1,680 per year. And internet, $840 per year. And that gives you a grand total of $22,620 per year that you're spending on your constant expenses, which tend to be your most necessary expenses. And so what we're going to do with that number is we're going to subtract that from the total take home pay that you're making. So we're going to take $56,500 minus $22,620. That gives you $33,880 left that you have to spend for the entire year. When you frame it this way, I'm telling you it's going to change the game for you. And here's why. We're going to break this number down so you can see exactly how much money that is per month. So you know how much money per month you have the freedom to spend now after you've already spent money on those things. So if you divide 33,880 by 12, it's going to give you $2,823.33 per month. Now we can start to look at the costs that you still have that just aren't as consistent. They might fluctuate. So in this example, we have groceries being an average of $600, entertainment being an average of $200, restaurant slash going out to eat $400, and gas $120, give or take. These can fluctuate, but these are still things that we need to do. We need to relax. We need to have fun. We also need to eat and, you know, like grocery shop. But if that was the average of how much you spent on those things per month, if you add all of that up, that's an average of $1,320 per month that we're spending on all these things on average, and that comes out to $15,840 per year. And as y'all have noticed, I've dropped the decimal points and the 33 cents because y'all get the picture. So if you remember from the beginning, we had $33,880 left after the consistent expenses like rent, utilities, car note, etc. After those were taken out, that was how much we were left with. So now if we take some of the more inconsistent expenses where they can fluctuate in terms of price, that's taking the $33,880 minus $15,840. We end up with $18,040 left 
per year to spend. And if you divide that by 12 and you look at that per month now, that gives you $1,503 per month that you're able to spend left. Now, of course, your expenses are going to vary. So from person to person, you're going to have a different amount of expenses and a different amount of responsibility. But for the sake of this example, I just gave those few expenses. But you can see, even with those few expenses, which honestly are not outrageous by any means, you can clearly see how much money you can really spend per year and per month. And if you're just spending blindly and you feel like you're making all this money and your expenses are really low, you're going to easily, I mean very easily, go over that $1,503 threshold that we have left to spend. But now the question is, what do I do with the rest of the money? You focus on the second thing that I want to talk about in this video. If you like the information in this video, I want you to type the words financially stable in the comments. Saving should be your priority once you're able to get this cadence down because this is what you're able to fall back on. This is your cushion, your blanket, and your pillow right here. This is what your safe space is when it comes to your finances. And so you know how much money you're left with at the end of the month. And in this case, it's $1,503. So. Since you know you have that kind of freedom at the end of every single month, obviously you might not want to put the whole $1,500 in the savings, but you might want to do half. And since you know you're going to have that money at the end of the month, the game changer is you start saving that money at the beginning of the month. You pay yourself first. You save with what you have at the beginning instead of saving with what you have at the end of the month. That way you save the most amount of money. And another game changer is you're going to want to automate this. And since we live in the digital age, it's very, very easy to automate your savings. I even made a video tutorial on how to do so if you're not sure how to do so. But it's a simple click and press of a button and then you're done. No joke takes less than five minutes to do. So in this example, we're going to cut it in half and say $750 is going to automatically be saved every single month. And if you're like me and your paychecks kind of like they're obviously the same paychecks per month, but your bills might not be the same like all your heavier and more expensive bills might be on the first half of the month but in the second half of the month it might be pretty light where you don't really have to pay much if that's you it might be best to split that 750 in half between paychecks so for your paycheck number one you'll have 375 automatically going to your savings account and then your second paycheck you'll have another 375 dollars going in your savings account from your checking account and from there, you don't think about it. And as you get more money and as you get raises and, and things like that, you can start to increase the amount that you save. But for now, that's what we're looking at. And that's as far as savings goes. It's honestly that simple. And since you know what numbers you're working with now, it can become a ton easier for you. If you really like how I'm breaking down information in this video, I have something for you in the comments that breaks things down even better, and it's called the $100,000 Action Plan. It's going to help you build your net worth up to your first $100,000, and I hope you like it. Linked in the description. Now, this third one may shock you, coming from me, but I would say if your goal is to become financially stable, the third thing you need to focus on is paying off debt or at least paying down debt. I know I talk a lot about investing, but honestly, a lot of people don't really know how to invest properly, which is why I'm putting together a whole investing course. And that's why I have a link in the description for such a thing. And I have a link in the description with a ton, like 33 plus high quality stocks and ETFs to invest in for those who need guidance on what to invest in and how that even works. But for the sake of this video, it makes the most sense for most people to focus on getting off debt. Plus, if you're working full time, you probably have a 401k anyway, so you are investing somewhat. So that's cool. But let's say for the sake of this example, you have $753.33 left since you focused on saving $750. So now that you have $753.33 left, it only makes sense for that to go towards debt. And the goal here is just simply to get that number down, as far down as possible. And that's whether it's a credit card, student loans, a car note, you name it. You're paying extra on these things to make sure they go down as quickly as possible, especially credit cards. And we're going to do this the quickest and best way. And that's by using the avalanche method, which means that we're going to be putting the most money towards whichever piece of debt you have. 
that has the highest interest rate regardless of how much money is owed. In this example, you owe $500 on a credit card, but it has a 27% interest rate. And the minimum payment is $75. But you also have student loans and you have $20,000 worth of student loans left. And the minimum payment is $180 with an interest rate of 5%. So for starters, we're gonna pay the minimum payment for both. So if you pay 180 plus 75, that's gonna be $255 towards the minimum payment. Boom, that's out of there. Now you have $498.33 left. So out of that $498, you're gonna take $425 and boom, throw it at your credit card because you know what? That's gonna wipe it completely out. Now, you don't have to worry about that 27% interest rate because ain't nothing there. And that, my friend, is going to leave you with $73.33. And where you're going to put that is towards your student loans. But not just towards your total student loans. You're going to actually go towards a specific loan. So usually student loans are broken up like alphabetically like A, B, C, D, etc. So you're going to go, you're going to put that $73.33 into whichever loan has the highest interest. And pretty much you're gonna focus on doing that every single month. And that's how that's gonna work. Now, am I saying in order to be financially stable, you have to have, you know, a thousand dollars plus when it comes to money in, money out? Am I saying that you have to have three to six months worth of savings in your savings account? Am I saying that you need to have your debt completely paid off? No, I'm not. There are minimums to this. I'm just saying that these are the top three that you need to focus on at first if you want to become financially stable. So there are minimums and there are guidelines in order for you to really look within and see if you're ready and see if you are financially stable, especially if you're someone who wants to get into investing or who wants to get into you know building side income and realizing you have to invest a little bit of money to do that sometimes you need to be in a place where you are financially stable enough to do so. And so in my opinion, this is what I look at. And these are just minimums, these are just guidelines, do what is comfortable. But for money in, money out, I would say when you're assessing this, if you at least have $500 at the end of the month to do whatever you want with, whether it's save, invest, pay off debt, buy yourself something nice, you wanna have $500 because I feel that that number is reasonable in order to give you breathing room. If you can get more than that, get more. Shoot for a thousand, shoot for 1500. But if you're starting off just now, try to get 500 left over. And if you can't quite get to 500, see what you can cut out or see if you can put in extra hours at work. But you've gotta at least give yourself some breathing room there. When it comes to savings, I would say if you were gonna stop and take a break from saving and focus your money somewhere else, because I do believe in focusing on one thing at a time, especially now that I've started applying that to my own personal finances and I'm seeing big results there, I would say shoot for a full month's worth of expenses saved. Because you've proven to yourself that you can do it. You've proven to yourself how long it takes and overall, I think you would feel fairly confident and comfortable within yourself. Now, these are minimums, so I'm not saying this is the best case scenario, but if you had to put limits on these, I would say at least aim for these, for your first milestone before going to something else. That's all I'm saying. And when it comes to paying off your debt, I would say your minimum goal should be having absolutely zero that you owe on your credit card. And I'm not discounting how difficult it can be to pay off credit cards. And I'm not saying that it's easy to get to that place. But before you do anything else, I really think you should aim to have zero dollars that you owe on your credit card. Because the interest rate on your credit cards will chew you up, swallow you, spit you out, and then repeat the process over and over again. Just avoid it as much as you can. And when it comes to student loans, I'm not super overzealous about it because I understand that it takes time and I understand that they have built-in plans for you specifically to pay them off within 10 years. So if you can do more than this, that's great, but just aim to pay the minimum payment for now, especially if you're just getting started out. Just aim for the minimum payment right now. You need to focus on saving money and having some dollars to your name and understanding how your money flows. If you follow the steps that I did and get too enthralled with paying off debt and trying to do everything at once. They can, life can get very stressful very quickly, not to mention work and like relationships and like family and just things happening on a day-to-day -day basis. 
you don't need that kind of stress in your life right now. But I will say, when you do pay off debt, another minimum expectation that you should have for yourself is use the avalanche method because it is mathematically proven to be the quickest and best way to pay off debt. And that, my friends, is the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. I had so much fun making this video and creating this example for you. So I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you took something from it. Once again, click the links in the description if you want more value and if you want more guidance on becoming financially stable. Anyway, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryans and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. And I will see you in the next video.